With Submotion, inspiration can come from a lot of different places, mainly I think from the fact that all seven of us are coming from different influences and different genres. It really creates this sort of creative melting pot. In Submotion Orchestra, we have seven band members. Tommy Evans on drums, Tariq Modi on keys, Chris Fatty Hargreaves on bass, Danny Templeman on percussion, Ruby Wood on vocals, and then the two of us. We were approached by someone who wanted to do classical meets dubstep in York Minster Cathedral. The manager of that label, who's now the manager of Submotion, he sort of put me and Tommy Evans, who was writing some stuff for Gentleman's Dub Club at the time, together and we sort of wrote some bits for this classical concert in all kinds of musicians from around. My mum was singing for us and Johnny from Gentleman's Dove Club was singing as well. His dad was conducting. We got the organist from York Minster involved. For me, I was seven when I picked up my first trumpet. I wanted to play the trombone, but my arms weren't long enough, so they gave me a trumpet. In some motion orchestra, because of that fact that trumpets can be a bit full on and when you're working with a singer who's got quite a delicate, fragile sort of nature to her voice. Um, we quickly figured out that the flugelhorn works better just because it's a bit mellower and it just similar sort of timbre to what Ruby's doing. I was travelling doing front house for the band for every gig from day one. I'd take that desk down and plug mics in and dub stuff out. So it was kind of like an improv jazz jam with dub effects from the start. That was very much like intrinsic in the sound of the band. If you're talking about mixing anything, if it's in the studio or if it's live, you're talking about balancing. And in part of balancing, when you start getting more technical, then you're talking about how much compression you're using on each element, how much EQ you're using to separate out each element. One of the things that I do in the studio is a lot of sort of sidechain compression where maybe the kick drum or some other element will trigger some sort of compression. If it's in the case of this kick drum, it will give the kick drum a bit more of a punch, a more room in the mix, but it'll also give it a sense of sounding louder than it is. And so we worked out how to do that live. We'll take a kick trigger, so every time it plays the kick drum, it sends signal down a line to both the compressor on your SP16 and the compressor on uh, Taz's synths so that on certain tunes we can literally replicate what I would do in the studio but live. The two main bits of outboard that I use, one is a Boss emulation of Roland Space Echo. The other thing that, that I've had since day one, Pioneer DJM 909, it's a bit of a legendary bit of kit. It's got 50 different effects, so the left channel you can switch to have a mic input so I can send from the desk, set my left channel to mic input, set my right channel to left channel because then you can have both channels doing the same thing, set my effects to 100% wet and then I can have all of those 50 effects at my fingertips and all I've got to do is flick my fader up on each channel. I started off actually using Ableton Live as part of our live setup, just triggering off the odd sample. And then over the years, as we've been writing, we've almost been using a sampler like an MPC 1000, actually factoring it into the writing of the tunes, whether it be like the main synth sound or something like that. In a live context, it's basically firing off samples that we've made. Sometimes those samples can just be adding a bit of glitter on the top of a track, but sometimes they can be instrumental to holding the whole track together. It can be the main synth part. In some settings, in some songs, it is the, like, the foundation of the song. The sound that we've loaded into the SP-16 and firing off, that's so unique that we couldn't replicate it in a synth, so we're using that as the bed. But it's always played live. It's not triggering off a track. With the SP-16, everything just seems to make sense. You click on something, touch screen, that does that. Click on this, this is doing what I'm expecting of it. It's made life a lot easier as far as how quickly I can even just get projects together, which means that we can then concentrate on what's important, which is making the music rather than getting frustrated with all those sort of technical size things. Mm -hmm.